I'm Brian Callen with Game Plasma, and I'm here with James Bevan from Gizmondo. And he's going to tell us a little bit about the new handheld uh, Gizmondo. This is the Gizmondo. Uh, first and foremost, it's a handheld games console. Uh, it's a, we class it as a multi entertainment device because it does so much more for the designs. Um, we're looking at the same kind of powers you get from a, a home console, but in a, in a portable format. Um, it's using Windows CE as a, an operating system. It comes with uh, Windows Media Player, so it plays MP3s, any kind of like music that your PC plays, this will play. It also plays MPEG4 movies, so it, it's pretty much everything for the music community. Um, it comes with a contract-free SIM card. Uh, that means we, uh, you, through the device you can even send and receive picture and text messages. We have a digital camera at the back. It's a, a 0.3 megapixel uh, fun camera, so you take some snaps, attach it to an, S uh, an MMS and send that on to, to friends. You can even configure it for pop-free email and set up a, an email account. So that gives you full mobile email via the, via the GPRS connection. It's tri-band, so it'll go pretty much everywhere in the world, bar Asia. We're actually releasing a separate unit for over there to allow for the, the different technology set up there. Um, in addition to all those things, it also has Surf GPS on board, which is the, the American military spec GPS. That has in-building coverage and goes down to one meter. It's really cool where, where you can go with, with, with this as hardware on board. The first thing it would do is location-based services. So if you're in any given situation, you can push a button and you can get an exact map of where you are, anywhere in the world, uh, and any services that you need, like ATM, a train station, uh, hotels, anything you need around you. Um, you can also use it for uh, uh, satellite navigation. We're going to be doing turn-by-turn uh, uh, -turn software uh, through a major GPS mapping company, uh, available on SD cards. Um, you pop that in a car cradle, and then that gives you full turn-by-turn -turn, um, satellite navigation in your car. Uh, the GPS also gives you something really quite special besides that from a gaming perspective. Uh, what you can do is, it, for the very first time, it gives you uh, GPS functionality within a game. What this means to the, uh, to the player, it is kind of akin to, to when someone went, oh, the internet, yeah, that makes it good multiplayer gaming. This is something similar in terms of where it can allow games to expand. Uh, we have a game called Colors, which is a gang warfare game. And the way that works is uh, you, when you set it up, you, you can nominate a geofence around where you live or where you hang out, anything up to 10 kilometers. That's your turn. When anyone comes into that area with an active gizmondo playing the game, it sends an alert to your Gizmondo, and you have to basically track them down. You can trade with them, you can buy stuff off them, or you can play them. When you say you have to track them down, does that mean you actually have to physically go to the person? <laughs> no, we, uh, the, uh, it's only an alert that actually sort of brings them into the game arena. Uh, obviously, there, there would be a few lawsuits heading our way if we uh, actually gave you the physical location of another player and allowed you to go and uh, well, <laughs> trade with him, should we say. That was one of uh, about the, the GPS mm -hmm. with an uh, invasion of privacy with uh, pe other people knowing where your location is and sure. all that. Not, uh, it's not something you need to uh, uh, worry about because it's a, a purely opt-in service uh, and you, it's something you actually request. You're not being tracked all the time. It's something you'd actually have to activate if you wanted that as a function um, because uh, in some respects you could actually you could need that. For example, if you were parking your car in a, in a dodgy area of town and you didn't want to leave it, um, you could set a, a GFX of one metre around the car, stick this in the trunk, and if it moves outside that area, you get an alert for it to your cell phone with a map precise location, speed and direction of travel. You can even track it on a website if you wanted. So it's, uh, not to worry, Big Brother isn't watching you with a Gizmondo. Well, that's good. Um, we were wondering uh, how many uh, publishers have you guys signed with for uh, the games? Currently we have two signed. Uh, we've got uh, Microsoft, we've got a stable of, I think it's around about 95 games to choose from. Uh, we're not going to be taking all those to Gizmondo because they have to be right for a, a portable format. You play games in such a different way in a portable uh, environment. You're, uh, you're holding the console only, say, half a meter from your face, uh, and the kind of uh, bursts that you play gaming in are much shorter, much more intense, and much more focused than if you were playing on a home console or a PC. Those would be longer gaming experiences, but uh, for handheld, it's waiting in a bus queue, a train station, sort of killing time between meetings, that kind of thing. Um, we also have a deal signed with SCI for 12 titles. 
Uh, the first one's going to be Richard Burns Rally, which is a really fast driving game. Uh, we have uh, Conflict at uh, Desert Storm um, and uh, access to the other Conflict games. SDI have got some really nice titles coming this year, so we've got a few that we can really push on that. Um, we announced today that we have uh, a Sega pack uh, from the, the old Genesis days. Um, so we've got Sonic the Hedgehog uh, and uh, Shinobi. Uh, no, it was really testing me now. The uh, Golden Axe, Altered Beast, and Akron, Akron 2 have been confirmed as a, as a, a classic pack. Uh, it's amazing how good Sonic actually looks on a, on a, uh, on a small screen. And uh, I don't know if you remember the Game Gear. Yeah. It wasn't so much portable, but it, it was kind of cool for it to have uh, Sonic on the move. Um, so that is a 16 bit gaming. It's kind of cool because I think it's almost two generations of gamers that have actually missed out on, on those really cool games. Um, we also have uh, deals in progress with all the other uh, major games publishers, so you'll be seeing quite a few big announcements coming out very, very soon. Um, now, with all the publishers, are you is Gizmondo going to focus on one genre, or are you going to cover all of them? Equally? Definitely, uh, definitely covering all, because uh, many different people have been wanting many different types of games. Uh, there'll be puzzle games. Uh, because Whenever you release a handheld uh, games console, there are three laws. Thou shalt have a Tetris-style game, thou shalt have a top-down 2D scroller, and thou shalt have a racing-style game. We've got all those. Uh, those cover off the, the basics of just people who want to play, uh, play the basic games. From there, we'll build it up to first-person shooters. Uh, Colors is so, uh, a good third-person uh, shooter, so we'll start to branch out in that direction. Uh, there'll be puzzle games, strategy games, multiplayer games. We've got Bluetooth. Uh, there's one that we hope to have signed for the show that we can announce, but uh, it's a, a big name multiplayer game that will allow you in, in an outdoor environment to be able to play via Bluetooth with up to four players. And for for that, when you play with the Bluetooth, what's the uh, the range that you have to be close to a person to actually be able up to, to play fifteen with meters? Fifteen meters. Yeah. So you don't have to be that close to them. Um. Now. Uh, when this comes out, what is what is the the public going to have to uh, fork over to uh, to pay to be able to have one of these? For all the functionality, and it's all in there from the beginning. You don't ha you don't have to wait or subscribe to any anything extra. It's three hundred ninety nine dollars for, uh, for the GPS, for the games, for the email, for the movies, for the music, everything. All the, in there for three nine nine. So no extra fees? No, no extra flattering. fees. Uh, with the SIM card, it works in the same way as, a, as pay as you go. You don't have to, if you don't want to be sending it for, uh, sending out text message or, or anything like that, you can actually uh, ignore that altogether. We put a contract-free SIM card in there just, uh, just so you can, you've got something to register it with. You don't have to use it, subscribe to it, top it up. But if you want to use anything like the email, you need to uh, have, buy packets of airtime in the same way you would uh, a cell phone with, uh, with pay as you go. Now, when we when it comes out and people start buying the games, how exactly do they go about buying the games? Is it a cartridge that plugs in and it loads up into the console? It's actually going to be all on SD cards, like this one. Um, the console comes spied with a, a 256 meg card for just, uh, as a first starter card um, for putting on movies and, and uh, uh, music and things like that. We'll also have de a few demos that we can stick in there as well. Um, the games themselves will all be on SD card. Uh, the, with SD cards, you can get up to two gig, uh, two gig at the moment. I think they're close to announcing a four gig card as well. They're getting really, really cheap. Because so many people are using them now. Um, I think a five twelve card. I saw one over here for like twenty bucks. So a really plummeting price. And a, and a five twelve card, you can fit an entire two, uh, two and a half hours worth of DVD film onto an SD card. And uh, I had a question about the uh, the processor that. Uh, runs the uh, video the graphics. Uh -huh. Can you tell us a little about that? Sure. It's uh, a Samsung ARM9 400 megahertz processor. Uh, most importantly, it's got a, uh, a the new NVIDIA graphics accelerator, which is a 128-bit uh, 3D graphics accelerator. It's a GoForce 4500. Um, it's uh, quite a new addition to, to, the, to the unit, but basically it gives us full 3D, and it really puts us up against the, the big boys, the Sony and Nintendo. Great. Um, do you have anything else to add? I can show you one of the games if you want to take a look. Or uh, actually, uh, yeah, one of the major things of the GPS that I, I, I didn't touch on. Um, an extra little function. We have a, a panic button on here. Uh, the way that you can use that, you can put up to four cell phone numbers on the device. That can be other Gizmondos or just regular cell phones. 
if you were, say, lost or if you were meeting up with uh, people in an unfamiliar surrounding, so uh, you couldn't quite work out where they were, if you hold down that button for up to four seconds, it sends out a blip to those four cell numbers and it'll give, again, your precise location with a map and uh, speed and direction of travel. So you should actually broadcast where you are to your friends to say, here I am, come get me, or uh, I'm over here, see you soon, that kind of thing. That would come in handy if you're playing colors and you happen to wander into a bad, bad territory. <laughs> yeah, calling some support. Um, this is actually an example of the colors if you want to take a look. Um, it's a very early tech demo, but it'll give you an idea graphically what the, uh, what the unit can do. Um, I can give you a quick demonstration on things like the, uh, the music and the movies and stuff like that. Um, from a technical point of view, we can actually... Uh, from the sound quality, we're actually 20% better than, uh, than an iPod in terms of bit rate. Um, so it, it's a very, very powerful piece of kit. Uh, here we go. If you want to just have a, a wander around, that will give you an idea graphically where this will go. Maybe you zoom in here. Can you tell us a little bit about the game while he's playing it? So, it um, Colors is the very first GPS game. It's, uh, it works on a principle of geofencing. Uh, the object is to own and control territory uh, around where you live, uh, so a physical location around where you live. Um, during the game, you, it, it works within a, a sort of a GTA-style environment, um, and what that allows you to do is, is trade, uh, buy weapons, uh, sell various merchandise, and uh, Basically, anyone, uh, anyone coming into your area acts as a direct conflict against your uh, a, a challenge against your authority in that area. So you have to take down any challenges that you might be met with. You can set up hierarchical structures of um, uh, uh, other people in, in the same area. Uh, obviously, you know you have to if you're going to maintain that respect. You need to um, obviously step up when the when the challenges come in. Um, but it's going to be something really quite different to, uh, from a gaming perspective. It gives an indication of where we can go from with GPS gaming. Um, it actually makes the whole world around you a physical game environment. Uh, and the, uh, the great thing about this, that is where it can go, because it, it, it actually makes other people's lo physical location to you a, a game feature. Uh, in, uh, the, the kind of direction that you take this is uh, you, you could be at LAX Airport and think to yourself, wow, this would make a great racetrack. And actually using the GPS mapping, sell out a, a bespoke racetrack based on where you are. So that that would be a really cool little thing that we we certainly got plans to work on. Purely because uh, it's a tech demo. So, uh, okay. This particular one is 45% complete. Uh, you've got accelerate on the play button and then left and right. Uh, there's different views as well. So that's only 45% complete, that game? Yeah. Uh, I'd like to see the one that's 100% oh. complete. <laughs> that's not so good. <laughs> you got the uh, upside down view. <laughs> there, we go. there we go. You were sliding on your roof. Ah. Now, uh, how do you, um, how does Gizmondo expect to uh, compete with Nintendo, with the DS and the new PSP? Uh, very slowly. <laughs> um, we we know that we're the newcomer. We know we've got a lot to prove. But uh, it's not that long ago that uh, Sony came to market, and everyone went, "Wow, you know, 
who, who do you think you are to come into, into our game room uh, with the likes of Sega and Nintendo trying to fight them off? Now look at them, they're, they're the strongest one out there. Sega's bought, uh, uh, no longer producing hardware, so it's, uh, there's always room for a new player. And by coming out with basically everything on board, the, the one thing that Sony doesn't do is give you everything up front. What we do is we, we're basically on here is everything. From the GPS, text messaging, the music, the movies, everything already goes straight out the box. Now what kind of a target audience are you, what kind of a target market are you on? Um, we're looking uh, initially at the uh, uh, 25 to 35 year olds uh, early adopter market and then as the, the, demo, uh, the install base grows the demographic gets younger so we'll, we'll start to look more towards the, the 18 to 24 as being the core group that will extend either way. Given that you can do so much with it, it will find its way into a much broader, a broader audience. You, you're going to get uh, you know, dads using it for satellite navigation. Well, I'll be using it for satellite navigation. Um, the uh, kids will be using it for text messages. Uh, it, there's going to be so many different appeals uh, to, to different audiences. We have uh, four other models in development as well. Uh, so it's very much a long-term business plan. Um, we've got uh, one with a hard drive that will be announced hopefully towards Christmas next year. Uh, there's a, a more feminine version which is a little sleeker. Uh, and there's also going to be a, a business model which is going directly after the BlackBerry market. That will have voice over IP. Uh, it'll be Wi-Fi. Uh, and most importantly, for the very first time, you'll have a bespoke business application to broadcast from, uh, from a business server directly live to the handheld unit. And that means for the very first time, you'll be able to do live level two uh, stock trading. Which is really going to set the world alight. Um, it'll probably crash the stock, the stock market in two days when everyone's playing games instead of trading stock. But you know, <laughs> better re release it on a Friday so it doesn't have that much of an impact. Right. Now, um, is Gizmondo are they a privately held company? It's uh, uh, Gizmondo Europe is a wholly owned subsidiary of Tiger Telematics, which is a U.S. based company. Uh, they're based in Jackson, in Florida, Jacksonville, and uh, they uh, their background is. GPS, GPRS, uh, business uh, business applications, tracking services, things like that. Um, the, this actually started life as a child tracking device, a way uh, of, of, of parents being concerned about their, their kids being, uh, being going too far away from home or getting lost. Uh, but then, you know, why would a, a kid take a, a tracking device with them? Uh, it, it just wouldn't wouldn't work. Uh, but the, the technology that that actually uses allows so much more. So we, if you flip the, the tracking on its head and say, well, okay, I want the, the location service. I need to know where I am. How can it benefit me rather than have someone watching me? So it, it, we just flipped it on its head. And because of the technology that's in it, it allowed us to, to import things like the gaming functionality and really build a very solid gaming platform and then join in things like the musical movies, etc. Um, we're also going to be looking at, some, uh, uh, hopefully later in the year, to be announcing that we'll be doing um, uh, video rentals online. So you'll be able to uh, rent a movie via the internet, transfer it over onto, onto Gizmondo, and it'll self-delete after two days. Oh, that's, sounds like you've got a lot planned for it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's so much. In some ways, it's, uh, it's very, very difficult to communicate how much this does. In one sentence, it, you can't just sum it all up in one go. It's it's, uh, it's kind of nice, and, but on, because on the flip side, it means that people have to discover it. It means that we can basically say, "Here it is." Let people really get to grips with themselves and evangelise for us. Now, uh, how many titles did you say that you have planned um, for launch? For launch, we'll have twelve. Twelve titles. Yeah, uh, and we'll quickly be adding to that. We didn't want to clutter it too much. Uh, in some ways. You can, if, if too many games out there to start, it can, it can clutter. Uh, and it makes the user very, very confused in terms of what they kind of like. Uh, so we want people to, again, to discover it, find out what it can do, and then start to introduce the games and go, wow, this is, this is really where it can go. Now, will the, uh, will the system be uh, sold with the game? The system, sorry. Will it be sold with the game? Uh, we're planning to do, I think, three packs at launch. Uh, one will be just the, the, the Gizmondo on its own. The second one will, will be with three bundled games. And the third will be a, more of a car kit uh, version that will have a car crate on a charger uh, for satellite navigation. Uh, I know as a, as a bloke 
the, the two hardest things in life to justify. One is night vision and the other is GPS. And this takes care of half of it. I've still got to work on my wife to allow me to get G uh, the night vision goggles. But <laughs> All right, we're going to roll.